Hi, my name is Bohadar Ahmedov. In this video lecture, we are going to discuss about the elementary mattresses, their definitions, we're going to learn how to construct them, and also we're going to discuss about the inverses of the elementary mattresses since we need them in order to factorize the mattresses. So if you remember previously, we talked about the three elementary row operations which we need to perform in order to bring the mattresses to the row echelon form or to the reduced row echelon form. And one of the elementary row operations was that we can multiply one of the rows as a constant and add this into the another one. So let's assume that you've got a matrix 1, 2, 2, and 5. And what you have to do is, in order to bring this matrix into the row echelon form, you would need to multiply the first row to the minus 2 and add this to the second one. If you do this, by the way, what you get is 1, 2, 0, and 1 which brings the matrix into the row echelon form. So if you remember, we did this operation by writing down in Word, and we did this manually. Now, one of the, uh, the, the next step would be to implement this operation into the computer so that the computer does this operation. And, and we can't really tell to the computer by words how, should, how the computer should multiply the rows and add this to the second one. And the idea would be to, to make this in a more, in an automatic way. So I, and, and, and the idea is to implement the matrix multiplication so that if I multiply the matrix A to that matrix, which I would like to figure out, I will get again the B. So essentially, so the 1, 2, 2, 5 should be multiplied to this matrix so that the result is going to be equal to the B matrix, 1, 2, 0, 1. And this matrix here is going to be called as the elementary matrix. And it should do the same operation as this elementary row operation. So now, let's figure out how to construct that matrix. In order to do this, I would like to do a couple of multiplications of the rows into the matrices. So let's say if you've got a matrix 1, 2, 2, 5, and if you would multiply this matrix into the row vector, for example, with the components 1 and 0, what you get is essentially, again, the row vector. Because the dimensions of the first matrix here is one row, two columns. Dimensions of this matrix is 2 by 2, and if you multiply them, you are going to get a matrix with the, with the 1 by 2 dimension. So 1 by 2 dimension. And we can multiply this row vector into the matrix in the following way. So essentially, I'm going to combine the two rows of this matrix with the two constants from this row. So essentially, the first constant here is going to be multiplied to this row. And the second constant here is going to be multiplied to the second row to here. So if you do the multiplication and add the items, so add the, add the rows, what we get is essentially 1, 2 plus 0 times to the 2 and 5, which is going to be equal to 1 and 2. So you see, so I'm going to write this here, so 1 and 2. So and every time when you do the multiplication of a row into the matrix, it is nothing else as just the linear combinations of the rows of this matrix. So now if I would just multiply this matrix 1, 2, 2, and 5 into another row, for example, with the components minus 2 and 1, what does it mean is that I'm going to multiply the first row of this matrix to the minus 2, the second row of this matrix is going to be multiplied to the 1, then I have to add them. So essentially minus 2 times the 1 and 2 plus 1 times the 2 and 5, okay, and this is going to be equal to uh, 0 and 1. Okay, so this multiplication is going to be equal to the 0 and 1. So you see, so this is, this two rows, 1, 2, and 0 and 1, are essentially the two rows of the speed. Okay, so what I have to do is, I need to combine, I need to get these two rows in the same matrix. And it appears in order to do this, we need to just simply put this row and this row into this matrix. So I'm going to substitute here 1, 0, and minus 2 and 1. And this is going to perform me this operation. So the multiplication of this matrix to the A is going to give me this B. And this matrix is going to be called as the elementary matrix. 
elementary matrix. Okay, so you see, so instead of writing down the elementary row operation, we are doing this by, by multiplying the matrix. So let's write down the definition of the elementary matrix. So the elementary matrix, matrix should correspond, should correspond to one of the elementary row operation to one, to one of the elementary row operation. Okay, so instead of just writing down the elementary row operations, we are going to do them by just matrix multiplication. So I'm going to write it here. So elementary matrix, elementary matrix should correspond to one of the elementary row operations. Well, what else? Uh, so what kind of other row operations do you know? So another row operation here would be multiplying. Uh, oh, so let, let's talk about the inverse of this matrix. So here, by the way, this kind of this kind of matrices, which is going to eliminate this entry are going to be called as the E T one. It is called like a uh, elimination matrix elimination matrix, which is going to eliminate the entry of the matrix at the position T and one. So that's why it's going to be called as the E T one. So now what I would like to do is I would like to discuss how we can get the inverse of this matrix. <coughs> so in order to do this, I'm going to write down what kind of operation it does. So the E T one, what it does is it multiplies the first row the first row r1 to the minus two and adds this and adds this to the second row right so essentially you've got the second row and the e1 is going to take the r1 multiplies this to the minus two and adds this to the r2 and what should the inverse of this matrix does is it's, it should revert us to the original matrix. It should undo the operation of the E21. So essentially, if you would just write down the matrices in kind of a sets, so you've got the R2. What does the E21 is, it just added the 2R1 to the R2. And what I would like to do now is to construct the inverse of the ET1. And the operations wise, the ET1's inverse should bring me to the original matrix, to the R2 again. So by just looking to this row, could you please tell me how we can get back to the R2? So, and the answer is kind of obvious because I just need to add the TR1 to here in order to get the R2, right? So that is why the inverse of the ET1. What, should, what, what it should do is it should multiply the R1 to the plus two and then add this to the R, R, R2, okay? So this is good. This is what does its inverse. So if you would like to just write this down, so the ET1 was simply one zero minus T and one and the ET1's inverse is going to be equal to the 1, 0, 2, 1, right? You see, so it adds the 2 times the R1 to the second row. So, well, if you don't really understand how we've got this inverse matrix, you should just remember that if you've got the elimination matrix or elementary matrix here, you just need to make this negative to be positive. If it would be positive, you would just make it negative. So another way to confirm that this is the correct answer for the inverse matrix would be to use the R algorithm, uh, which we introduced before. So if you remember, so we have got your matrix, we put the identity matrix here, we apply the Gauss-Jordan elimination over this huge augmented matrix. And at the end, you need to bring the side of the matrix's identity and the matrix just after the identity is going to be the inverse of your matrix. So we can just simply apply this for this matrix. So let's say you've got this matrix 1, 0, minus t, and 1. 
So you need to put the identity matrix here. So 1, 0, and 0, and 1. 1, 0, 0, 1. Then we need to apply the gauss scholl elimination. So essentially, I need to get rid of this minus 2. In order to do this, you need to multiply the first row to the 2 and add this to the second. If you do this for the whole matrix, what you get is essentially 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 2, 1. You see, so it became into this form. It means that this matrix here is the inverse of this matrix. So if we call this as an ET1, then this is going to be ET1's inverse. So this is how we're going to find the inverse of the elimination matrices. And one of the reasons why we're working or why we would like to construct the elementary matrices is that it's, it's super easy to find the inverses. So let's, uh, let's discuss now about the second elementary operation, which is just the multiplication of a row to the constant. Multiplication of a row to the constant. For example, if you've got a matrix with the entries 1, 2, 2, 4, or oh, let, let's make it T5. So what you can do is you can multiply the first row to the 2, right? So how, you, how we did this before by the elementary row operation. You row down the first row, is going to be multiplied to the 2, and what you get is 2, 4, 2, 5, right? So now I would like to get the matrix, this matrix from this one. So I would like to get the B from the A, not by just doing this manually or writing down this by the sentences, but just matrix multiplication using the elementary matrix. Elementary matrix. And it appears the diagonal matrix does this operation. If you've got this matrix 1, 2, 2, 5, you have to multiply this to the diagonal matrix and we call the diagonal matrix a matrix whose entries below and above the diagonal are equal to the zero. And on the diagonal, what you need to have here is the scaling constants. So here, if I put 2, it means that I'm going to multiply the first row to the 2. And if I put here, put 3, it means that I'm going to multiply the second row to the 3. But fortunately for us here, so what we have to do is we need to get the 1 here. So I'm going to put 1. So if you just multiply this matrix to this one, what you get is, oops. So what you get is essentially 2, 4, 2, 5. So the same matrix. So instead of writing down, or instead of doing this operation by the row operation, we're doing this using the elementary matrices. So now, what, one more thing which we need to discuss about the elementary matrix, this diagonal matrix, which is going to scale the rows, right, correspondingly, is to discuss how we can get the inverse of this. And again, so if you've got the R1, what does the, the D, D matrix, so this D matrix, it just multiplies this to the T, right? So let us write down the D matrix multiplies, multiplies the first row, to the 2. Now, I would like to revert my original first row. I would like to come back to this. I would like to undo that operation. What kind of operation I need to do so that I will get the R1 from here? So exactly, we need to, uh, so we need to exactly multiply this uh, so 2 R1 to the 1 over T in order to get the R1, right? So the inverse of the D, it should multiply, multiply, The first row to the minus 1 over 2. This is what does the inverse. So essentially, if the D would be equal to the 2, 0, 0, 1, then the inverse of the D would be equal to the 1 over 2, 0, 0, 1. And again, we can get this D matrix by performing our, uh, our algorithm. So you need to put this T0, 0, 0, 1 matrix into the augmented matrix with the entries here, 1, 0, 0, 1. If you do the elementary row operation by just multiplying the first row, which is 1 over 2, what you get here is 1, 0, 0, 1. And here you're going to get 1 over 2, 0, 0, 1. Okay, so this matrix here is the inverse of this matrix here. Okay, so this is the D and this is the D inverse. So, well, this is how we can get this D matrices. 
So, and one more trick we can we can implement here is that so hey, if it is difficult for you to construct the elementary matrices like an elimination matrix or this diagonal matrix, what you can do is you can use the identity matrix. So let's say you've got this matrix one, two, two, five, right? So you need to do what you need to do is you need to eliminate this two, and you're going to multiply the first row to the minus two and add this to the second one. Okay. So now we say that, hey, I don't want to do this. I would like to figure out the elementary matrix, right? So here I would like to get the elementary matrix. And if you don't know how to construct this, just take the identity matrix 1, 0, 0, 1. And instead of applying this operation into this matrix, just apply this over the identity matrix. So essentially multiply the first row of the identity matrix as a minus 1 and add, the sec add this to the second row. Okay, so if you do this all with the identity matrix, what you get is 1, 0, minus 2, and 1. And this is going to be exactly your elementary matrix here. It's going to be 1, 0, minus 2, and 1. Okay, so this is the one of the ways how we can get the elementary matrices. So we can get the diagonal matrix in the same way. So if you've got the matrix 1, 2, 2, 5, and if you've decided to multiply the first row to the 2, okay, so this matrix operation should do this, that should perform this row operation. And instead of just applying this operation to R1, just apply this over the identity matrix. 1, 0, 0, 1. If you do this, what you get is 2, 0, 0, 1. And this is just nothing else as your origin or as your elementary matrix. And the last elementary operation which we need to discuss is the interchanging the rows. So the third one is interchanging interchanging the rows for example if you've got so we we call this as a p matrix um, okay or the permutation matrix so if you've got a matrix like 0 1 and 1 and 2 so in order to bring this matrix into the row of shell and four for example you need to change the rows right so row 1 is going to be changed with the row 2 and it appears we can do this using the matrix multiplication again. So we are, we, we are going to call that matrix as a permutation matrix. Permutation matrix. So if you've got this matrix 0 and 1, 1 and 2, you are going to multiply this to this permutation matrix so that the rows are going to be flipped. So it's going to be 1, 2, 0, 1. And the idea is going to be like this. So here in the first row, what you need to get is the second row of this matrix. So it means the first row should be multiplied to the zero and the second row should be multiplied to the one, right? I'm going to simply put here zero and one. And on the second row, I'm going to put one and zero. And if you multiply this matrix, you're going to get exactly this one. And this blue matrix is going to be called as a permutation matrix. And you can again obtain this permutation matrix from the identity matrix by just splitting, by just like flipping the rows of the identity matrix, the first row and the second row of the identity matrix. So now let's discuss about the permutations and the inverses of the permutation matrices. So it's really cool matrix because its inverse is equal to itself, right? So again, let's say you've got this matrix 0, 1, 1, 2. If you multiply this matrix to say 0, 1, 1, 0, what it does, it just changes the rows of this matrix. 1, 2, 0, 1. So now I'm going to multiply this matrix 1, 2, 0, 1 into the another one so that I will get my original matrix with the component 0, 1, 1, and 2. So how I can get this? Again, by just flipping these two rows, right? If I would just put here 0, 1, 1, and 0, I would get exactly this one. So the inverse of the permutation matrix is simply as itself. So essentially, we've defined it about the three elementary matrices, essentially the triangular matrices. So what they do is they are going to multiply a row as a constant and add this into the another one. We talk about the diagonal matrices. What they do is they are going to scale the row. So essentially, they're able to multiply a row as a constant. And also, we talk about the permutation matrices. They are going to interchange the two rows. 
So we're going to use the three row operations, three rows in order to factorize the matrices, for example, using the L yield decomposition in our next videos.